Uh, welcome everyone again to another episode of the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the humans behind the big ideas that are shaping our world and inspiring the future and future creators. And for all those that like great stories, I'm Ira Pastor, your life sciences ambassador along for the show. So on previous episodes, as we've discussed the topics of health and wellness and various inherent challenges, uh, we have been uh, sort of taking a virtual trip around the world, uh, talking about this from the perspective of micro nation states, island nations, uh, impoverished nations in some cases. Today we are going to talk about uh, the dynamics of health, wellness, transplantation, specifically from uh, the angle of a, a country where uh, that is large but sparsely populated. Um, we're going to be journeying to Mongolia, uh, which at over uh, one and a half million square kilometers is the 18th largest country in the world, but it's very sparsely populated with a population of only about three million people. Uh, it is a landlocked country uh, with very ara uh, little arable land and approximately 30% of the population is nomadic or semi-nomadic. And when it comes to things like modern surgical care, uh, there have been many challenges over the years due to the rugged geography, uh, obviously the nomadic population and different political and financial constraints. I'm honored today to be joined by Professor Sergulin Orgoy, who is a general surgeon for Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, best known for pioneering and developing low-cost liver transplantation and laparoscopic surgery in Mongolia. Uh, Dr. Agai is an honorary fellow of the American College of Surgeons, a professor of surgery and head of the surgery department at Mongolia National University of Medical Sciences, and the vice president of the Mongolian Surgical Association. Uh, Dr. Seglin earned her bachelor's, master's in clinical medicine, doctor of medicine, and PhD uh, from Mongolian National University of Medical Sciences and completed medical fellowships in South Korea, Switzerland, Finland, and the United States. Uh, she has led several projects, uh, which were rather impressive examples of possibilities, not only in Mongolia, but other low and middle income countries by addressing the absence of bursty surgical care. Uh, and she's led the Mongolian World Health Organization's Global Initiative for Emergency and Essential Surgical Care. Uh, the coordinated effort addressed the absence of capacity for emergency and essential services uh, has dramatically improved uh, both surgical and aesthetic care capabilities in over 300 isolated rural communities throughout Mongolia. Uh, in 2005, when nearly half the population was still nomadic and only about 4% uh, of the gallbladders that were moved laparoscopically, Professor Orgoy orchestrated the expansion of laparoscopy throughout the country. Dr. Orgoy, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule uh, to come on the show today. Yeah, thank you very much. Invite me in this meeting and in this discussion. Yeah, Mongolia is uh, by the population very low, just more than 3 million and uh, our um, uh, population live far from each other and especially uh, before 2005 in Mongolia had uh, difficult condition, especially in primary health care because in time emergency situation road was very bad and uh, also um, connection was was bad and uh, in this time uh, who helped us much and we wrote some project essential emergency and surgical care uh, strengthening in mongolia and the who uh, uh, helped us and uh, we worked with the uh, uh, representative uh, WHO in Mongolia connected close and we uh, organized some uh, trainings and mobile surgery and some not just uh, training for uh, primary health care doctors and also nurses and uh, drivers and all of other uh, people who work in the primary hospitals. In that time, about uh, our after emergency operations, mortality was very, very high mm -hmm. because they lose much time. And we uh, performed some research and we decided to uh, organize for um, increase 
mortality and morbidity emergency surgery. And until 2009, we worked hard We our uh, surgery professors, uh, Department of Health Sciences University, uh, uh, went to countryside, especially for decreased uh, mortality after emergency surgery. Uh, and uh, from 2009, decreased uh, post-operative mortality emergency surgery. And 2009, we organized third WHO uh, Congress in Ulaanbaatar in that time. We, we um, recorded our uh, job in this Congress and our uh, project was uh, number one project, WHO. And after that, 2013, WHO decided to uh, build um, WHO collaborating center, post collaborating center on the world in Mongolia for essential and emergency surgical care. And in that time also, we had big problem, uh, especially for laparoscopic surgery. Before, uh, in 1996, uh, in Mongolia, performed first laparoscopic cholecystectomy operation by the help uh, American uh, doctor, Buck Rusher, mm -hmm. and he, trained our doctors and he gave us one uh, laparoscopic set. And, uh, but uh, in this time, Mongolian economical condition was very, very poor and impossible to buy laparoscopic surgery instruments. Mm -hmm. Until 2005, just uh, zero, zero 0.4% Laparoscopic tummy performed by then laparoscopic. All of others open. After open laparoscopic cholecystic tummy, uh, hospitalized, hospitalized patient for seven, ten days and wound infection. And after discharge, um, about one month, patients cannot uh, to continue their job and like in that, like in invalid state. And after that, uh, we, uh, in this time, um, from the Swanson's Family Foundation USA, mm -hmm. visited in Mongolia, and uh, they connect with me, and they, uh, in this time, they really want to work with us, especially in emergency surgery. And I, asked from this, them just one thing, because in a, especially in emergency surgery, we organized uh, training and we have project, and just help us please for develop laparoscopic surgery in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And uh, many times I asked from them, especially uh, I want to tell many of my thanks to Dr. Ray Price from mm -hmm. the, um, university. Uh, he was director of um, medical part of Swanson's Family Foundation and uh, he and Swanson's Family Foundation uh, director decided to help to Mongolia and also we began in this time laparoscopic surgery training project and from 2005 and six, seven, nine, in these four years, we organized laparoscopic surgery training just in Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. just UB center hospitals, hospital number one, hospital number two, two hospital, a cancer center and like that. After that, um, also again, I asked from Ray, Oh, Ray, help us, please. Uh, now, okay, now in UP, people uh, have possibility to take uh, care for especially laparoscopic surgery. But in countryside, our 89% of population live in countryside. They mm -hmm. need also like in that help. And Ray think many times, and and then he 
<laughs> he was agree with me and we began from 2009 our countryside training laparoscopic surgery and um, uh, from Swanson's family foundation give every hospital two laparoscopic surgery new sets okay. and trained our Mongolian doctors uh, in this uh, sets and they uh, this set stayed in Mongolia in this hospital and like in that our doctors was happy because they have laparoscopic surgery sets and after that they already trained and they have possibility to continue their job and uh, our training uh, we organized training two times in every hospital every countryside IMAC because first year trained and next year they give us some exam <laughs> mm -hmm. and like in that implemented we uh, laparoscopic surgery whole mongolia in mongolia now have 21 provinces mm -hmm. uh -huh. from this 29 provinces, provinces just 19 already perform laparoscopic surgery excellent just two provinces they uh, until today they haven't any uh, instrument sets and they cannot uh, train to train laparoscopic surgery and uh, after this training many times the Chris who want to go to Ulaanbaatar for just laparoscopic surgery mm -hmm. for example from 1000 kilometer a day before went to UP with some parents not alone go to UP for laparoscopic surgery. Uh, in this time, this, uh, this uh, will be uh, not useful for them. They have possibility to stay at home and they have possibility to uh, take laparoscopic surgery in their provinces. And like in that, we developed laparoscopic surgery. This was our big results by the help Swanson's Family Foundation and also uh, helped us much uh, sages, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. American Society Laparoscopic Surgery. And uh, results was very high and uh, our um, stakeholders after that understand us and they helped us now and uh, especially in Mongolia have insurance mm -hmm. for high cost instruments, okay. high cost surgical instruments from uh, give from this instrument uh, insurance 100% cost and mm -hmm. just 25% costs is turn to pay from the patients. Mm. And uh, for laparoscopic surgery, for example, uh, from the insur insurance, uh, give about uh, through 300 or 500 dollar. From them, just 25 percent to pay our patients. This was big uh, political um, decision uh, for Mongolian uh, patients. And uh, uh, now they uh, almost without any big uh, payments, they have possibility to take laparoscopic surgery. This was our one of the results and um, without any help of so my uh, friends in Mongolia, we haven't any possibility uh, to develop laparoscopic surgery like in slave whole Mongolia. Mm -hmm. This was bigger result. So it one is uh, transplantation. Okay. Yeah. In 1996 uh, in mm -hmm. Mongolia performed first kidney transplantation. But after this kidney transplantation was uh, unsuccessful. Mm and stopped for 10 years. Mm. And from 2005, began lapar kidney transplantation. Uh, our doctors trained in China for 
uh, kidney transplantation. And from 2007, we began liver transplantation project because our doctor, one of Dr. Bus Central's hospital, uh, me had possibility to go to Finland for uh, training liver transplantation for three months. Mm -hmm. And in that time, uh, nobody not understand us. Just we finish our training. When we came to Mongolia, we um, met with our Minister of Health and m many stakeholders, but they not understand us, mm. not believe us, believe ah. us, because <laughs> they thought that your liver transplantation is high level, like in Mongolia, developing country, impossible to develop uh liver transplantation but we not stopped okay. i decide uh, we will suffer for we find uh, we also i wrote one project uh experimental liver transplantation surgery to our one of foundation mm -hmm. and they give us four uh, million uh, to Greek, it means about uh, 200 to $2,000. Okay. $2,000 about. And uh, we began uh, or organize, built uh, experimental surgery laboratory, and we bought some pig, a pork for experimental surgery, mm -hmm. and we began experimental surgery by our team. We organized our team without any health stakeholders, without any health directors, because they didn't understand us. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, 2009 invited me uh, one uh, Congress, uh, World Congress in uh, China, and I saw in this Congress will participate Professor Sangilji uh, from uh, Assam Medical Center. Okay. And I decided to meet with him in this in time this Congress for ask help. <laughs> and I went to uh, Beijing in 2009 and mm -hmm. I met with Professor Sanguili, um, Asan Medical Center, uh, Korea. Mm -hmm. I know him, he is a uh, world man for uh, living donor liver transplantation. And uh, I, to I told him about Mongolian condition because in Mongolia have very high mortality, liver cancer and liver cirrhosis, high uh, Mongolia had epidemic, uh, hepatitis C, B virus, and like in that I introduced him some data and I asked from him help. And uh, he told me that in that time, uh, excuse me, Dr. Sergei, I cannot to tell you answer in, in this time. I'll go return to my home and I'll discuss with our directors and you will uh, answer with you. And, and, and then he went to Korea and after just one week later, he sent to me email, okay, Sergei, we have possibility help you and your team and uh, in this year we will train uh, your team by uh, in one group four doctors and nurses and 12 doctors and nurses we have possibility to, to train and all of expenses connecting with your team uh, in Korea will take care no. Myself and Professor Lee, he paid all of our food, accommodation, and also he find one uh, person, a businessman, 
businesswoman and he's, uh, this businesswoman give us um, air ticket money mm -hmm. and we went to Korea and first we saw uh, living donor liver transplantation in Assam Medical Center and from this time every year uh, the Professor Sangali connect us with Assam Foundation and uh, uh, director of Assam Foundation uh, is uh, uh, Chung. Mm -hmm. He is uh, uh, Assam uh, uh, Hyundai Corporation uh, owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he helped us much in Assam Foundation for uh, from 2010 until today. They help us. They train every year our team uh, in Korea for one month and first 33, 33 uh, living donor liver transplantation operation performed in Mongolia with his team. Mm. They, in time, in 2011, we began liver transplantation in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. In that time, we haven't any instruments. A sun team bring their instruments, we together perform liver transplantation and they again went with instruments go to <laughs> Korea. Until 2012, mm -hmm. we worked with them like in Sway and from, we performed five, six, uh, liver transplantation and was successful. Just after that, our stakeholders and directors understand us. Mm -hmm. Ah, in Mongolia, have possibility to implement liver transplantation. And 2012, they from our government gave us money for uh, instruments. Mm -hmm. And now we have instruments. Our team trained. Uh, in Korea well and um, our teachers helped us much and now in until today we performed 95 living donor liver transplantation wow. and from them our success is very high mm -hmm. about one year's uh, uh, survival 95 percent. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Five years survival, ninety-two percent. Wow. Yeah. Very. Good. And the uh, and uh, from the statistics, WHO and the World uh, Liver Transplantation data uh, by the number uh, for liver transplantation. Uh, in on the world, number one who uh, performed liver transplantation is Korea, mm -hmm. our teacher, Asan team. Mm -hmm. And second one, Turkey, and third place, Mongolia, wow. for the living donor liver transplantation. And just last three, three years, we performed by ourselves living donor li liver transplantation. We perform now. Uh, pediatric liver transplantation, uh, cadaveric liver transplantation, and living donor liver transplantation, okay. and uh, um, uh, incompatible blood group, uh, incompatible ABO, incompatible liver transplantation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all of kinds of liver trans transplantation we can perform now by our, our team and our by ourselves you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about because you know you uh, you mentioned a bit about the um, uh, the high rate of hepatitis um, yeah in, in the country um, both you know, sort of hepatitis but also the super infection combination hepatitis um, I've also seen some you know I've, I've looked at some of your papers you uh, you wrote um, a couple of years ago about a um, 
uh, I, I pronounce it right, uh, echinococcosis, uh, which is some type of a parasitic disease, uh, typically with uh, sheep, and like, which are extensively you know, farmed and so forth throughout Mongolia. Can you talk a little bit just to, about sort of, um, obviously both of these things lead to uh, liver damage, liver cancer and so forth, and hence transplantation. Uh, just talk a little bit about what's going on in Mongolia and for, as far as sort of uh, uh, vaccination against some of these uh, problems or, or dealing with some of the uh, sort of disease control from from these perspectives that, that lead to the liver damage. If you yeah. Will. In Mongolia, in the last two or three years, mm -hmm. they will work uh, active anti transportation. Uh, tra uh, hepatitis C and B, mm -hmm. and the last uh, four years we use uh, vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, B hepatitis, and uh, also by the help of US um, Stanford University, mm -hmm. uh, also we began uh, project uh, treatment for hepatitis C, especially we use uh, harmony. Okay. Yeah, harmony. It is drug anti uh, HCV, hepatitis okay. C, C, and uh, this was this gave us big results because uh, who have hepatitis C before the um, this treatment we just used interferon, right. but. Interferon is high toxicity and also uh, side effect is high and uh, needed long time and was difficult and very high cost. Right. And now Harmony from the US gave us a 99% discount. Nice. Mongolian <laughs> patient just pay one percent. Nice. Yeah, this was this, this gave us big results for treatment hepatitis C, and uh, in Mongolia now whole Mongolian use uh, who had have hepatitis C, we have possibility to treat them by harmony. Mm -hmm. This is the big chance because without any health, harmony is uh, cost is very very high very, very high. Sure. Impossible to use uh, harmony everybody, mm -hmm. even the, in USA. Sure. Uh, in Mongolia, everybody have possibility to treat by harmony. And also we use hepatitis B uh, vaccination mm -hmm. from the um, just who, who had just uh, very young age and mm -hmm. I think that uh, maybe after 10, 15 years, this hepatitis uh, B, C infection will be many times decreased. By and I want to tell, because like in Mongolia, developing country, without any help developed country, impossible. Sure. For example, how we will uh, develop laparoscopic surgery uh, without any help, Utah University, Swanson Family Foundation, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, without any help, uh, Korean uh, Asa medical team, how we will develop liver transplantation, uh, lack in levels, very, very low cost, sure. um, high possibility to develop, implement in Mongolia, like in that high mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, last example is uh, harmony. Mm -hmm. Without 99% discount, how Mongolian people use harmony? Everybody. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, big uh, example exemplar of uh, Developing country have possibility to develop uh, in levels uh, in high levels, like in develop 
developed country, this mm -hmm. show, Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Um, I, well, while I have you on the show, I, I have to ask, obviously, because we uh, obviously the world is in a very uh, unique situation the last few months. Uh, I, I had took a look before I uh, became on the show and I saw that uh, Mongolia, interestingly, uh, as of a couple of days ago, only had about four coronavirus uh, cases. Um, yeah. just, I'm just interested in uh, what you're seeing. You, know, you are you're on the front lines of medicine there. Um, how how is everything going in yeah. terms of this uh, pandemic? Obviously, you're very close to China, but it seems that you know maybe because of the distribution of the population and everything, you might be a little more naturally protected against uh, sort of um, large amounts of people moving around with it. Uh, what, what's going on in Mongolia? With yeah, now uh, it first first time we have read much. Mm -hmm. from the coronavirus infection, COVID-19, mm -hmm. because China and Mongol Mongolia live uh, almost together, yeah. and uh, we had very high possibility, uh, like in uh, Italy, Spain, uh, uh, Italy, wow. and like in Iran, and like in other countries. But we, uh, can protect with, from this in, infection until today. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. today, because uh, first two months um, in Mongolia, not uh, cannot uh, not be uh, had uh, any infected person COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. ten, mm -hmm. but. This ten just uh, came from other country, mm -hmm. not from Mongolia. And um, now this ten patients' condition is good. Uh, first, you, you, I think that you listen about first person. First uh, patient came from French. No, this no. was French. Uh, guy and uh, um, infected uh, COVID-19 and uh, we hospitalized and all of uh, uh, contacted persons we uh, take control and uh, after that uh, nine from the uh, Mongolian government decide bring our uh, people from their foreign country in between this uh, more than 1,000 people came to Mongolia from Korea and from European country and but from them just 10 infected mm -hmm. and also um, we not use time and we uh, began treatment and all 10 patients condition is good now and also uh, not uh, in this time um, we're not afraid because um, just this 10 person um, already in control already treated in all of uh, persons who came to Mongolia also in control they've uh, protect just 14 days uh, in special place, and they, our Mongolian uh, government spent much money for uh, keep these uh, people in control. And 14 uh, just after 14 days, they will go out to go family. But again, 14 days they will stay at home, not mm -hmm. will go outside. And like in this way. Uh, we work, uh, our Mongolian doctors work hard and uh, we protect COVID-19 until today very well. Also, um, treatment is uh, good. Yeah. And we sometimes we use uh, traditional medicine and European medicine. All of it was time two patients' condition was very bad, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But they, they also now after seven days, they, they, their condition was uh, they are doing well. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a unique uh, it's a very unique time for for all countries so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what everyone learns from, from these different patients and, and different approaches um, you know what what's uh, what, what's next uh, for you on the horizon and what uh, what are your plans in terms of uh, new projects uh, uh, new uh, it's new surgeries, new 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 programs, maybe planning. Where, what do you, what do you see happening in the next few years for yourself? Close time we will begin pancreatic transplantation. Ah, because already uh, we trained our uh, young guys in Korea, also in Asia Medical Center. Or oh, again, I asked from Professor Sengoli, and I also connected with the professor. Han, uh, who is also world man and who for, especially for pancreatic surgery and uh, pancreatic transplantation and um, he is my friend and he he helped us also much and he trained our young guys in the Asan center uh, in last uh, one two years and our mongolian guys also trained for pancreatic transplantation and in this year in, uh, in 2020 we will begin pancreatic transplantation also in the first central hospital mongolia and uh, we have more many plans if now in mongolia we, we already built a basic of uh, kidney transplantation, liver transplantation, and bone marrow transplantation. And now we will begin pancreatic transplantation. After that, we have possibility to develop all of other kinds of uh, transplantation. And we have now basic and laboratory and uh, imaging diagnostic and internal, all of uh, this um, part of uh, uh, our doctors already trained and we have possibility to train and to continue our job. And also we need to develop laparoscopic surgery um, next step. Mm -hmm. Just in uh, UP, uh, big hospitals perform laparoscopic uh, liver resection and all of uh, colon resection like in that uh, uh, at operations and in provinces, in provinces, hospitals also need to develop this kind of laparoscopic surgery. Need to develop, and we also in this side we also began our job. And uh, we um, three years ago we began advanced trauma life support uh, training in Mongolia, and before. Uh, who want to, to train uh, ATLS went to countryside, paid, paid about more than $2,000 and like and that. Now we, we, from this year, we will begin to train our, all of the resident doctors, uh, especially for ATLS training, because uh, American College of Surgeons give us, um, already we prepared our, national trainers before from 12 countries came to mongolia trainers and trained mongolian doctors now we have team atlas team and also we, we will to train all of the resident doctors from this year uh, atlas training also helps with us uh, our dr ray and uh, desert Inter international charity also this help from the our friend also helped us much, and we will to continue their their help. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, it's it's been a real you know fascinating story listening to to what you've done over the years, uh, and and really wishing you the best as you continue to grow uh, these really uh, innovative and creative programs there. 
um, you know, for everybody that's going to be watching or listening on the uh, various uh, podcast networks, uh, we've been spending time with Professor Sergele and Argoy, uh, general surgeon from all the way around Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, doing really amazing things with liver, pancreatic surgeries, laparoscopic surgeries. Uh, she's professor of surgery and head of surgery department at Mongolia National University of Medical Sciences, vice president of the Mongolia Surgical Association and honorary fellow of the American College of Surgeons. Uh, Dr. Guy, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on the show and then really thank you for everything you're doing to move medicine forward uh, in, in, in a very unique environment and time. So uh, really thank you very much for, for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you.